So you finally got a Mac and you want to game on it. Well, good news, Mac gaming has come a long way. Ever since Apple switched over to the Apple Silicon M series chips, Macs have become surprisingly capable gaming machines. We now have titles like Cyberpunk 2077 and Resident Evil 4 Remake running natively on Macs as old as this four year old fanless M1 MacBook Air. But the fun doesn't stop there. We aren't just limited to native Mac games. In this video today, I'll be showing you how to open up your Mac to the world of PC gaming. With software like Crossover and Parallels, I'll be introducing you to console emulation on the Mac, and I'll be showing advanced tips like controller pairing, external solid state drives, and Mac gaming performance tweaks. And I know you didn't buy your Mac just for gaming, but once you've got it all set up, it's way too easy to spend hours playing instead of doing something productive. That's where boot.dev comes in. It takes the same addictive loop you get from gaming and applies it to programming. You're still leveling up, earning XP, completing quests, even fighting bosses. But this time you're actually building real life coding skills. With boot.dev, you'll learn backend development step-by-step -step using Python, SQL, and Go. There's even a game development course where you can build your own Asteroids clone from scratch. Instead of sitting through boring lectures, you're coding real projects like you do on the job. I've been testing this out myself and honestly, it feels more like playing a game than sitting in class. Every challenge gives you XP, levels, achievements. It's addictive in the best way. And if you ever get stuck, Boots, their bear wizard AI tutor, has full context of what you're working on. He won't just hand you the answer, but nudges you with the right questions to get you moving again. They also have the training grounds, where you can grind unlimited challenges until you're confident. All the lessons are free to read and watch, and the paid membership unlocks interactive features, hands-on coding, AI help, progress tracking, and the gamified mechanics. Plus, there's a big Discord community and a 30-day refund policy, so there's no risk. So check out the link at the top of the description and use my code for 25% off your first payment. And thanks to boot.dev for sponsoring this video. Let's jump into the 10 things that you need to do to set up your Mac for gaming. Number one, the App Store and Apple Arcade. Now the easiest place to start is with the Mac App Store, which has come a long way. Apple has been working with developers to bring huge titles across. Why not test out Resident Evil 4 Remake right now? The first level is free to download and play, and you can pay to unlock the rest of the campaign. And there are other big games that you can try, for example, Sniper Elite 4, Death Stranding, and Assassin's Creed Shadows. It's incredible to see games like this coming to the Mac platform, and all you need to do is to log in with the App Store with your Apple ID, and you're all set. Now let's talk about Apple Arcade, Apple's gaming subscription service. Honestly, it's not really built for Mac and a lot of the games feel more at home on iPhone and iPad, but don't discount it completely. When you buy a new Apple device, you get three months of Apple Arcade for free and there are some hidden gems. Sonic Dream Team is exclusive to the Apple Arcade and two of my personal favorite roguelikes, Slay the Spire and Balatro, are both included and work great on Mac as well as iPhone and iPad too. Number two, controllers. Controllers are definitely essential for most types of games, and most modern controllers pair instantly with macOS over Bluetooth. For example, the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller and the Xbox Series controllers are fantastic. But don't forget that the PlayStation 4 DualShock 4 controller and the Xbox One controllers also work perfectly as well. And if you're looking for something a bit cheaper, companies like 8-Bit do make some of the best third-party controllers out there, especially if you like these retro-style designs and they work great on Mac. Pairing is really simple. Just go to the Apple logo, system settings, and Bluetooth, and put your controller into pairing mode and you're done. No drivers, no messing around. And you can even pair Switch Joy-Cons and Pro Controllers too. But right now, only Switch 1 controllers work. You'll need to wait for Apple to update macOS to support Switch 2 controllers in the future. Number three, mouse. A trackpad works great for casual gaming, but if you're more serious about shooters or strategy games, you'll need a mouse. The one thing I'd say is avoid Apple's magic mouse. It can't left and right click at the same time, which makes it kind of useless for gaming. Now, most Bluetooth or wired mice will work fine. If you're using an older USB-A wired mouse, just grab a USB-A to USB-C adapter and you're all good. One must do tip though, disable mouse acceleration. macOS has built in acceleration that makes movement feel floaty and inconsistent. Disabling it will give you precise, consistent control, just like on Windows PCs. Just go to the Apple logo, system settings, mouse, advanced, and disable pointer acceleration. This will give you much more control, especially when playing first person shooters. Number four, Steam. Steam is the largest PC gaming store and has a much bigger Mac gaming library than the App Store. So just go ahead and install the native Mac Steam client and you'll find everything from indie gems to major AAA titles. For example, No Man's Sky and Cyberpunk 2077 now have proper Mac native versions that run beautifully on Apple Silicon. Other recent titles like Silk Song and Dead Island 2 all work great too. And when you've opened your Steam library on your Mac, you can filter for Mac games and you might be surprised at how many are compatible. However, be warned, some older Mac ports on Steam were 32-bit and never got updated to 64-bit and therefore won't run on Apple Silicon Macs, so always double check. And one quick tip, you can research whether a game is natively Apple Silicon or running through the Rosetta translation layer. 
Often native games run faster, but even Intel-only Mac titles often perform surprisingly well through Rosetta 2. When you're running a game, you can check this through the activity monitor, and you can see what CPU type the game is running as. You can also find out more information about this on the Apple Gaming Wiki website. Number five, other stores, Epic and GOG. Now, Steam isn't the only place that you can get Mac games from. The Epic Game Store is also worth installing simply for the fact that they hand out free games every week. Over a year, you can build up a huge Mac gaming library at zero cost. Then there's GOG good old games. Their collection is DRM free and you get to keep your games forever and a lot of retro titles and new titles work perfectly on Mac. For example, Cyberpunk 2077 and Baldur's Gate 3 Mac ports are great on GOG. Also worth noting, some Mac ports are exclusive to Epic and never come to Steam and vice versa. So Borderlands 3 is a great example. The Mac version is only on Epic. So don't skip out checking both stores before you buy. Number six, crossover and the game porting toolkit. Now let's get into Windows gaming. Crossover is one of the most exciting tools for Mac gamers. It uses Apple's game porting toolkit behind the scenes and specifically something called D3D Metal, which translates DirectX 11 and 12 graphics calls into Apple's Metal Graphics API. And what that means in practice is that Windows games can run directly on your Mac at quite impressive performance. Now, not every game works. Now, a lot of live service titles that use anti-cheat won't work at all. And you're gonna to need to do some tweaking but the list of playable games is growing fast. If you wanna find out more about how to get crossover working on your Mac, I'll leave a link in the description for my latest crossover on Mac gaming tutorial. Number seven, Parallels Desktop. If you need a full Windows environment, then Parallels Desktop is still the easiest option, especially because we no longer have access to bootcamp on Apple Silicon Macs. So Parallels lets you install Windows 11 ARM as a virtual machine and run it seamlessly within macOS. Now performance is mixed. Triple A titles usually run okay, but older or less demanding games is where Parallels really shines. And here's a really important detail. Some 32-bit Windows games actually work far better in Parallels than on Crossover because Parallels is virtualizing Windows instead of translating those 32-bit games on the 64-bit macOS environment. A great example of this is Fallout New Vegas, a Windows-only game that's 32-bit. In Parallels, it runs much more smoothly than in Crossover. And whilst Parallels is limited to DirectX 11 games and below, it does have the advantage of being able to run some battle eye anti-cheat games which Crossover can't do. So if you have a powerful enough Mac, you can run games like GTA 5 Legacy Online and also games like Escape from Tarkov. So while Parallels isn't perfect, it's invaluable if you want compatibility and convenience, and it's great for productivity too. Many Windows applications like Excel and AutoCAD work best in a Parallels virtual machine. If you want to find out how to do this on your Mac, then make sure to follow the link in the description for my Parallels on Mac tutorial 2025. Number eight, emulation. Apple Silicon Macs are fantastic for retro game emulation. If you're new to it, OpenMU is the best starting point. It has a super user-friendly interface. Just drag and drop ROM file into the Mac optimized UI and it automatically sorts into your library. It supports most classic consoles from the NES to the PlayStation 1. For handhelds, PPSSPP is excellent for PSP games. Dolphin covers Wii and GameCube and RPCS3 can even handle PlayStation 3 games. And yes, Switch emulation does exist on the Mac, although it's not in current development. It's still very much possible to do on the Mac. What I'm going to do is leave a link in the description for my showcase of emulation on the Mac and also to all of the individual tutorials for each specific system and how to get them working on Apple Silicon hardware. Number nine, storage, solid state drives. Modern games can eat up hundreds of gigabytes of space and Apple charges a fortune for internal solid state drive upgrades. The answer, an external solid state drive. A basic USB-C solid state drive is enough for most people. But if you want speed and reliability, go with a Thunderbolt enclosure. I recommend the Acasis TB501 Pro. It's blazing fast and perfect for storing large game libraries. You can even install Steam, Epic, or Crossover games directly to the external drive, keeping your internal storage clean for apps and macOS. Just make sure to format the external drive as APFS so that you can maximize compatibility and reliability, and you can use it as a location to store all of those extra game files. Number 10, advanced tips. On Macs with active cooling, so that's any Mac with a fan, so any Mac that's not a MacBook Air, you can enable something called high power mode. And what this does is that it allows the fans to run at a higher rate and allows the performance ceiling of the Mac to be raised and sustain much longer without thermal throttling. And speaking of fans, make sure to keep your Mac well ventilated. Don't block your fan exhaust. And if your Mac doesn't have fans, then consider keeping it in a well ventilated area or even point a desk fan at it or using cooling pad to help with temperatures which could reduce gaming performance. Thirdly, lowering resolution settings is one of the easiest 
ways to improve frame rates. For example, dropping from the max native resolution to something like 1080p can massively improve performance with very little visual loss. And if the game supports it, you can use upscaling so that the game renders at a lower resolution and upscales to your native resolution of your Mac using something like Metal FX or FSR. Make sure to check the game settings to see if those options are available. And if you want to check the frame rates of your games, you can do this through the Steam in-game overlay. Or if that isn't working, you can also enable the Metal HUD. So any game that uses the Metal Graphics API or translates into Metal like D3D Metal will be able to be tracked through this Metal HUD. It shows all of the relevant FPS analytics on screen in real time. If you want to see how to do this, then make sure to click the link in the description for my tutorial. And that is it, 10 things that you need to do to set up your Mac for gaming. And I know that Apple Silicon Macs aren't gaming PCs, but they've come a long way. With the right setup, native ports, crossover, parallels, emulation, and a few smart tweaks, you can build a surprisingly powerful gaming experience. So let me know in the comments, which of these do you already use and which one should I make another updated tutorial on? And if this helped you, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Mac gaming tips. See you in the next video.